Welcome to the OHSU Effect Inside Health and Science at OHSU. I'm Lacey Evans. Lots to cover on the show today, including new advancements in x-rays and MRIs. The director of Think First will join us to talk about preventing head injuries in kids. And we're also going to talk about preventing the need for C-sections. But first, we're going to talk about toxins and some common toxins that can be found right in your own home. With us now on the OHSU Effect is Dr. Fred Berman, Director of the Toxicology Information Center at Croet up at OHSU. Hi, Doctor. Hi, Lacey. Okay, so what is Croet? Explain what you do. (laughs) Well, Croet is the Center for Research on Occupational and Environmental Toxicology, and we were established by the Oregon Legislature to promote occupational safety and health in Oregon, specifically for Oregonians. And we do that through basic and applied research, as well as outreach and education. Uh, Basic research uh, in things such as cancer prevention, uh, repair of musculoskeletal injuries, uh, dealing with um, night-day shift cycles, that type of thing. Uh, Workplace research, uh, uh, working with, uh, for instance, uh, truckers and the special problems that they face uh, in their work because they're lone workers and oftentimes can place themselves in danger or live unhealthy lifestyles. Um, many, many other areas. Outreach and education is the area that I'm involved with, and one of those uh, endeavors is the Toxicology Information Center, where uh, I provide information to people who are concerned about chemicals in the workplace. So how does the Toxicology Information Center differ from the Oregon Poison Center up at OHSU? Well, the Oregon Poison Center deals primarily with uh, poison emergencies or uh, any instance where someone is exposed to acutely to a uh, chemical or other type of poison. The Toxicology Information Center uh, does not deal with medical emergencies or medical questions of that, of that nature. We de- deal primarily with information about chemicals and their safe use. Got it. So it seems like there are new stories about toxins in the home almost on a weekly basis. Is this something that we should really be concerned about? Well, um, yes and no, um, because Oftentimes we have the, the, the worry du jour, you know, the, the thing we have to worry about every day. I think it helps to, to check up on that by doing a little research if you are concerned about uh, what you hear. Uh, good places to check are the Centers for Z- Disease Control websites, um, the EPA. The uh, National Library of Medicine has excellent resources on toxicology, and that's through their uh, portal called ToxNet, T-O-X-N-E-T. Um, but there are an, uh, a number of just common chemicals that are in our home that, that you really should be worried about. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about those? Yeah. Um, I like to think in terms of gases, liquids, and solids. <laughs> and uh, in the gas realm, of course, uh, one of the most insidious but common uh, toxicities in this country is carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is produced by incomplete combustion. For instance, if your gas furnace is malfunctioning, uh, say during the summer a bird built its nest in the intake and, and you're getting incomplete combustion, then you can have carbon, dioxide, carbon monoxide exposure in the home. Uh, also, it's a, uh, we always hear of people uh, who in the winter may wind up burning their charcoal burners indoors. That's not a good idea. A uh, number of ways uh, for carbon monoxide to uh, cause problems. And the other one uh, that I can think of right off the top of my head is, in Portland especially, is radon. And radon is a, is a radioactive gas that uh, comes out of gran- granitic type of rock, which we would not have in this area except for the fact that 15,000 years ago there were these huge floods uh, out of Montana that, that brought uh, a lot of granite material. And so there are areas in Portland where Radon does leak from the ground, and it can potentially get into basements and get into the home. And over many years of breathing that can cause uh, a number of problems, including uh, cancer of the lung. Uh, In the area of liquids, all you have to do is look under your kitchen sink or under your bathroom sink and see all kinds of cleaning agents, uh, drain cleaners. Oftentimes, these are caustic agents that can uh, cause burns of the skin, or if uh, children, heaven forbid, were to actually get a hold of these and drink some can cause serious burns uh, in the esophagus. Uh, And that's not that uncommon of an occurrence. Also, um, oh, let's see, let's uh, quickly, well, paints and solvents would be another that you would, you you might want to be aware of and and make sure that you have those under control. In the solids, uh, I can think of lead. 
And homes that were built prior to, say, the 70s may contain lead-based paint. So if you're considering repainting and that whole process of preparing can release substantial amounts of lead paint dust. So it's always a good idea to assess the type of paint that you have before you undergo any kind of painting project. I wanted to ask you more about the lead paint. Is it as simple as just painting over it and you're fine, or is, do you need to do more? Well, it, it really depends. I mean, encapsulation is what they call painting over it. And sometimes that's the best remediation method to prevent that deterioration of lead-based paint and, and the, the production of dust, which then you can, you can uh, breathe or get on food and such. So uh, there are, there are uh, uh, lead-based paint contractors, people who are trained to deal with that, and they can give you the best method for dealing with the problem. Yeah, that's probably the safest way to go. I think so. <laughs> what about in the workplace? I mean, that's what you guys uh, were established for. What are the biggest concerns about toxins, you know, in the workplace? Well, I, I receive calls every day from people, not only in the workplace, but homeowners and, and people all over. And in fact, uh, on the internet, I get contacts from all over the world. But um, I think it's all over the place in terms of chemicals in the workplace because the workplace is such a varied uh, arena. Uh, some of the more common ones, though, that, that uh, I get calls about are solvents, which are, uh, can be in paints or they can be used for cleaning and degreasing a uh, number of operations. Uh, and solvents are volatile chemicals that you can breathe and become sick from. So those are fairly common. Uh, heavy metals, uh, lead, uh, mercury, cadmium, uh, and such. And interestingly, and this, this is a lot of times outside the workplace, but, but also inside the workplace, is mold exposure. And uh, I get a number of calls related to sick building syndrome. And oftentimes this might be due to molds that are, that are growing in improperly maintained or non-maintained uh, ventilation systems. Now, do you work with the employee and help them try to maybe get over their symptoms or work around those chemicals safely? Or do you talk to the employers also and say, this would be a safer way to handle these chemicals? Or here's what you need to do to get the mold out of your building, something like that? Well, I speak to employers. I speak to employees, all kinds of people, healthcare professionals. And so I try and tailor... Uh, my response to their questions uh, in a way which which hopefully furthers their solution to the problem. And that may be that uh, they might have to work with their employer to identify a problem. Uh, or if the employer doesn't know where to go, I can suggest uh, how to uh, get some help in, in sleuthing out what exactly the problem might be. Well, Croat has also conducted a lot of research on the impacts of pesticides for people who live and work on farms. So what do we need to know about that? Well, one thing you should know is that pesticides on farms are among the most highly regulated and controlled uh, areas regarding pesticide use. Uh, farmers require training, uh, EPA, uh, OSHA, DEQ, Department of Agriculture are very closely monitoring pesticide use, so it's highly controlled. Really, where pesticides, believe it or not, are the most dangerous is in the home. Because once a pesticide is sold to a homeowner, it's not under any kind of regulation. And oftentimes, homeowners don't read the label. And I recommend reading the label at least three times before you <laughs> use pesticides in the home. And so, uh, by far, the most common types of uh, poisonings are related to home use of pesticides. And and so, if you're going to be concerned, I think that's your the the, the closest area to any person, you know, is really the use in the home. Yeah. Well, you mentioned maybe calling a contractor if you're doing a lead paint job, reading those directions <laughs> three times. Mm -hmm. Any other tips or advice for people who are going to take on a project at home by themselves? Well, I uh, I mean, this is what I do is I, I always sit back. I'm getting older, so I, I have to worry about musculoskeletal injuries and such. So I stand back and, and ask myself, well, what's this job going to entail? How can I hurt myself? Am I going to be using ladders, you know, or, or such? Or what's the best way to achieve that? And so if you're going to be doing any kind of uh, home maintenance that involves the use of chemicals, sit back and, and look at what the chemicals are that you're planning on using. Again, read the label. Look at the precautions. And then uh, dress appropriately. That may include um, impervious gloves, rubber gloves, long sleeve uh, cotton clothing, uh, you know, dust mask if you're creating dust, a number of different things that you can you can assess prior to doing the job that, that'll keep you safe. Good, good information. That's Dr. Fred Berman, director of the Toxicology Information Center here on the OHSU Effect.